Should I turn in? <laughs> What's up, guys? Um, so, I decided to do, I want to try to do a, a thing regularly, and one of the things is like give out advice and uh, also help you guys with understanding kind of study patterns that I may use or work towards um, to get stuff done. Um, and so the kinds of things you guys will need to, to follow along with these things, these YouTube videos I'm going to be starting doing, um, and I'll be doing this every video, but this video specifically, you'll need a sketchbook, any kind of sketchbook, a pencil, any kind of pencil, a, a small sharpie pen or something similar to that, um, something that basically has some thickness to it, and then so, uh, a big sharpie pen. And that's pretty much it. You just need, like, pencil pens, and that's it, uh, and, and then I carry like extra couple pieces of paper, because what I usually do is I'll put it underneath like a sketchbook, or if you only have sheets of paper, obviously, um, you can just double down, and the reason why I have uh, several sketchbook, or I'm using a sketchbook, is I'm just going to fill the sketchbook up um, as kind of the part of this YouTube series, so if you feel like you want to follow along, I highly recommend getting your own sketchbook to do that. And then the book that we're going to be studying from today, uh, and it depends on how far I get through this, but I, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go through books, and I'm going to be studying from them. This one is the Mega Man Official Complete Works. It's pretty much all the Mega Mans. All of the Mega Mans. And so uh, I'm going to go through this later. But the way that I'm going to do these videos, the first part of this video is going to be showing you guys some things that you guys can do. Uh, it's just exercises slash warm-ups to help you get better at your draftsmanship. And I'll be coming up with uh, things that you guys can be doing um, periodically. Um, so we'll just go ahead and switch over to that right now. Yeah. <coughs> can I hear it? I can. <laughs> You're right. So you can see here I have my paper underneath. Um, this is something that I have my students do. This is not something that I've invented. This is clearly a thing that you can get from a lot of different types of drawing books or art books or uh, if you go to any kind of formal educated area. Uh, basically draw circles and lines and stuff like that so uh, let me just go ahead and show you. And this might be a little weird for me just because I have John on my shoulders with the camera. But basically you want a ghost and draw a draw circle. Now your first circle might be like really bad and that's kind of the point. And uh, you just keep doing it and you just want to fill up your whole sketchbook. Now you can see like this doesn't take much time. You know, maybe you can fill in the gaps with smaller circles. And what you want to try to do is draw from your shoulders or draw from your elbows. When you draw from your wrist, this is almost always the case, right? And even though you may be on a digital medium, like a, a tablet or something, um, I still highly recommend you like draw from the shoulders or your elbows. And so you'll just go, and I want you guys to just fill up a page. Like right now I'm just going to do a quarter or a third of the page and do another demonstration. And the next one will be lines. You just draw two points and turn the paper. And this might, this might be actually hacks because you can't really turn the paper if you're using a tablet. You can't really turn your tablet. But you can rotate your canvas if you're using digital medium. Um, but since I'm using traditional, I, I almost instinctively want to just turn the page. But if you want to kind of still practice, like, the tablet, what that feels like, then do it without rotating. It's going to be more, much more difficult, but it's good practice anyway, um, because it will teach you how to draw with the tablet uh, when you're drawing and facing forward, because you can't really move the tablet. And so you want to test it. You want to test different strategies in terms of drawing. See, like, I miss, but it's okay. I, I kind of can gauge what I did wrong. I can feel that. See, I, I adjusted and I fixed it. And see, what this is doing is, is getting your brain practice on terms of how to draw straight lines. And you want to try all kinds of things. So you sometimes, don't just think about always going like left to right. You can always go right to left if that feels more natural. See, that was really bad. That was bad too. And so I can see that I keep going to the right, so I'm going to think about going to the left. And see? And, and you're not going to get it right away, obviously, if you keep practicing this. Um, it's going to help. But you want to just keep doing this and quantify, you want to quantify your lack of effort, or I'm sorry, you want to quantify your failure. You want to see how much you failed. So that way you can adjust accordingly. You want to think about that failure. You want to think about these circles too. Like what is it about the circles that are like oblong? Like, like the bottom right and the top 
uh, right are kind of oblong on some of these, right? So maybe I should think about arcing, getting better at arcs right here. And so you can practice that, or maybe you can try to think about it like this, you know? So maybe drawing a circle in this direction might be better. And you can already see, I, I immediately got much better results. And so, but like for whatever reason, that kicked up. And I think that's because like there's no paper. And so I want to go over here. No, see? So this is not the paper's fault then. There's something that I'm doing. But like I never draw in this circumstance. But I'm noticing there's a little bit more roundness though. And so maybe I can try to, uh, like, try to draw a perfect circle by doing like kind of a parentheses approach. So that could be a thing. But you want to just practice these. And then here's another thing that you guys can do in terms of strategies, um, getting better with draftsmanship. You want to try to draw an arc. You make three points, and then you draw an arc. Again, these are things I've learned from like uh, watching Scott Robertson videos and stuff like that. And these ones are always hard for me. And you want to ghost. Ghosting is a good practice. But sometimes you can't ghost with Photoshop because it's hard to tell kind of your hand, your hand-eye coordination, what's going on. Oops. There you go. Don't you laugh, John. <laughs> Don't you laugh at me. You fool. Oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch. So, <clears throat> you want to change up the, like, the anchor points? So you want to, like, make it, like, much harder, like a Nike logo? Like a really short curve? And see, this is hard because I can't even see it, right? It's much easier when I'm in Photoshop. Yeah, see, it's rough. See, I was about, like, a good centimeter or two off. But you can see this is pr good practice. Now with the tablet, like a lot of these straight lines can be just handled by just holding shift or whatever, but sometimes you have opacity to it or whatever. Good draftsmanship is, is just the best, and like you can tell that I still have some places where I don't really, I, I typically never draw circles as much, um, and I don't really just do much stuff in traditional, but you can see this is good practice, and I'm going to be doing this as well every, every time I start uh, one of these videos. So we'll, we'll just go on from here. So anyways, I want you guys to draw circles, straight lines, and curves. And uh, good luck. And so we're going to go ahead and go to the next part of our video. Alright, so... <clears throat> the Mega Man book. Now, just for the sake of um, you guys' peripheral vision, because you guys won't be able to see if I move it normally where I would have it. I would have it like kind of mounted on top, whatever. It, it's fine. This is just a demonstration, just to kind of show you guys my study patterns. And this is the book that I'm going to be studying from. And uh, this is going to change, obviously, depending on the books. But my my um, my methodology to studying is pretty much the same every time. But it's going to be a little bit different. So maybe you have this book and you're like having a hard time learning from it. Um, maybe you can watch this video. I'll give you some insight on how I go about it. So the first thing I usually try to find is evidence of sketching. Uh, in any kind of good art book, they will have some evidence of that. And you can see right here, there's a really nice... Like sketch line. So, this what this does is gives me insight into that he roughs it in, and he probably doesn't do a or he or she does not do a crazy like drafted like they don't do this first. They don't like you know draw construction lines and then they go on top of that construction line, you know, with a more elaborate line, whatever the case may be. Um, I mean, they might. You, know, you want to look through here and see if they do. Like, see, now it looks like they pretty much just draw everything. And so, and then if you look over here, see on this page actually, you can see there's a little bit of that sketching. Like, it's kind of loose, but it's, it's still pretty functional. It's still form fitting. And when I'm using the word form fitting, I mean, like, I can see the object's form. <clears throat> you know, if you look at the swords over here, you can see that too. And these are kinds of things I pay attention to. I look at this drawing, even though it's rendered out, this has evidence of looseness and, um, draftsmanship uh, removed like there's it's still very clean but like it's removed of like real um, clean lines if you look at this this is clearly a much better drawing and so I try to avoid these types of drawings until I understand how this drawing is made because this is usually and always the fundamental part of this artist's drawing pattern is that they do this and there's a lot of information that's missing too, like how this person trained and studied, um, because that might have a lot to do with how they draw. And if there's evidence of this or uh, any kind of information that you can find, like you know this artist, you can ask them, or you can see their earlier work or the people that they're influenced by, that helps tremendously. Then you can start investigating what makes these things good. But whenever I'm studying, I have an objective. My objective is not so much learning how this person actually draws. It's more about like, because I have my way, own way of drawing and painting, and so it's not really important. It's more about, like, how this person designs, because I love these shapes. I like how geometric, how blocky these are. 
you know, and I want to learn more about them. So I want to look at one that I feel is simpler, something that I can like wrap my mind around um, immediately. So this character is nice, but she's simple, but she's not. There's not a lot of form. Um, it's not really extruded like some of the other ones. So let's just keep going. Let's keep exploring. And this is good to notice too. Like you don't just stop at the first image you find. You know, you, you try to find something that you can you can try to help your brain like organize. Um, sometimes, oh here we go. This is perfect. So this elephant dude is where I'm gonna start. He's on the right. Oh, and the guy right next to it too. This golem, sweet. And so this is great. There's like little drawings and stuff like that. And so uh, I have a pencil and a large sharpie, and I'll explain what you can do with them. But right now I still start. Like this pretty much is gonna be the only one I'm gonna use for quite a while. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to do it like he does, or, or she, right? And they basically try, they draw the big shape, right? So you just go like this, and I think the minim, keeping it minimal in terms of lines is useful so that they can allow them to cut in without it looking like they're doing a lot of drawing, without it like getting, because if you do like this and you just keep like trying to figure, it's going to get so sloppy that you can't start to really see or feel how it should have been. So you should try to keep it pretty close to what they did, and if you keep failing, then try again. It's important that you keep trying again because what you're doing is if you, if you fail and you keep continuing, you're going to build a bad habit. You don't want to build a bad habit, you want to build a good one. You don't want bad habits. And so you want to do this, you look at this, you see how he does it, you want to try to mimic that. Okay? You're getting a little bit of insight into how they draw. And so the next thing I'm going to do is try to draw that ellipse for the arm. And again, it's not. I'm not trying to be accurate, I'm just trying to understand how this person might have been thinking. Okay, so I already see something that I made a mistake in. Like, it would have been smarter for me to draw the other shape before I drew that shape inside. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start again. So before I draw the pivot or the the entry level like or this like basically the socket, before I draw what's in there, because I can see through, so it's 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 obvious to me. But what's important th is that I start to extrude out, and this is probably how this artist did too. Maybe not, Maybe, you know, I, I don't know 100%. And so I'm drawing this curve too to represent kind of like because it's it's hard to represent this kind of. Uh, like turn uh, when it's like slow like mostly we're looking straight on so if you just draw a kind of a curve that represents this turn it usually does a good job of representing and you can see the artists did it themselves you know and then they use lighting with the painting to kind of show that sharp turn which is great it's good it's clever and so you can see like when I'm when I'm studying I'm like thinking about all of this and I think that's the number one problem that people run into is that they're not thinking. They're just doing, they're just copying it and not even analyzing. They're not trying again. You know, whenever you have an experiment, you come, you come up with a hypothesis, you try to build a system, and then you experiment. If the experiment fails, immediately you start over. You don't continuously try to fix this failure. You, you adjust accordingly, just like the lines. And so now I'm going to draw this over here. And since I don't have light, I'm going to kind of represent that there is some sort of cross right there. Um, another thing is that this person is, drew like a really beautiful kind of like um, like collar where it's like like comes in and out constantly. So there is no construction lines for this. So either this person like just is badass and just knows how to do that, or maybe they did have like a pencil drawing in which they showed them to do that. And so I'm thinking, okay, how could I draw that same thing without necessarily screwing it up? And this is when a, a pencil comes into to the factor. Is when you see some something that seems a little bit too difficult for you to attach or uh, attack right away, you try to just do it in a loose way. And all I'm gonna do here is use this as a guide. You know? And just try to find places where I can do this. And so then I can use that and it's going to make it so much easier. Oh, I see I already made a failure again. I should have extruded that. I was thinking of the spacing of these and I realized oh, actually, you know, I, I think I'm okay. No, no, I'm not okay. So this is a failure. And here's the beautiful thing about starting over and drawing again, you just get better at it. You start to understand this one drawing that much more. Instead of copying it once, you're, draw you're copying parts of it several times. And I realized maybe he did draw it freehand, because now that I think about it, freehand would be a lot easier. But it wouldn't be 100% accurate though. And he draws lines to uh, represent bevels. 
and then there's like a bunch of rings. So this is going to be hard, and it's going to represent. It's going to teach me how to draw, perhaps these ellipses. Now let's pop out this piece, and I'm lucky that I found this drawing. Sometimes you don't find a really nice drawing that's easy to kind of start wrapping your brain around. And that sucks because then you have to deal with like the most difficult of drawing to study from. Um, but that's that's okay. If that happens, that, which I'm sure one of these videos I eventually will run into that problem. I'll, you'll see me demonstrate that as well. What's going on, John? <laughs> just, I'm Adjusting. So like here, here's another situation where I, I shouldn't have drawn ahead. See this trunk. This trunk is like a whole different piece. But I wanted you guys to take, take a no notice of this. Look how bad my drawings are. Like, look how awful they are. They're not very good, right? And you're like, well, I'm not impressed. Well, that's the point. You know, if this looked good, that means I already know how to draw like this. This means I already know how to design a, in this world. But since I don't, um, it's going to look bad. I mean, some things may look good, like my, the way I'm drawing my lines may feel pretty confident or feel... That stuff is like the stuff that I showed you guys before, which is the circles and lines. That's the stuff that allows you to draw with confidence or study with confidence, not worrying about that your, at least your draftsmanship. Like, at least you can draw a circle, right? Or you can draw a curve. Those things you can practice without study. You can just, just keep drawing circles and lines and curves constantly until you do. And so I'm going to look at this trunk and just see how this person did it. So maybe they just did like a shape and then they do kind of like what I do with painting. Instead of seeing its dimensionality, they designed its dimensionality in the line art. And I think that's a clever thing that I see a lot of my favorite line artists do this often. And see, and I'm going to try to draw this and understand this in my own perspective. Like I'm trying to turn it. So I'm not necessarily drawing what I see on there. I'm just trying to draw what I think I could have done with it and build my own three-dimensional shape based off or inspired by this design. You know, I'm not trying to mimic anymore, I'm trying to uh, understand. And sometimes understanding doesn't require you to full-on draw exactly what you see, but try to draw it in a different perspective. Like, try now to draw, like, see how it's moving around and stuff up here? I'm going to try to draw mine, like, doing the same thing. It's going to come up and over. All right, I'm going to draw kind of a shape that I think it could represent. And now I'll try to draw from here, and this is going to be quite difficult. But I think you could do it. And if this is not easy to you, then you need to start over, right? You need to reevaluate why it's not easy. But this is okay. Like I said, it's not as difficult, or at least it may not appear as difficult for me, because I have some sense of three-dimensional shape. And I realize to really sell this whole shape, this shape needs to look like this. Okay? And so... Like I said, pencils are good to help you gauge little things. Um, now, why do we use the big sharpie? The big sharpie is like if you are really having a hard time of like doing the sketchy stuff, use the big sharpie because it will force you. It will absolutely force you to think about the shapes. Okay. So now, if I would want to just draw the the shape of this this helmet, instead of drawing it, I have to just make a shape, right? I can't really can't really draw. This this is just too big. And so you end up making the shape of like this 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 head. And I'm gonna do the trunk and everything too. Just the trunk and the head. See there's a horn, the horn over here too. And then it goes into there. And then you just fill in. And then you have the silhouette. And you're getting high. <laughs> you feeling it, Johnny? Smell the sharps? I can smell it really bad. And so <laughs> And so if you have like white out or a white pen, you can draw over that to kind of see the shape. But, but this will help you see the silhouette. And maybe you can draw it out with a regular Sharpie and then fill it in later. But this will help you start to see the shape. And when you start to see the shapes like uh, this, you'll start to paint like I do, where you block everything in. And that's pretty much it, guys. This is how I would study kind of almost everything in here. Uh, maybe I'll come back to this book some other time. If you guys want to see some of the artwork that's in this book, just so you guys can, if you don't have it already, let me close this Sharpie. <laughs> and draw over this. It's freaking badass, man. It's a really good book. And let me show you some of the stuff that I love about this book. And I've already studied from this book uh, quite a bit. Uh, I mean, it has so many different kinds of character designs. But they have, like, this really cool 
evolution of characters too, um, where it shows you it shows you like the costume version of it of the character, and then it shows you like their their evolved version, which is really cool. And stuff like this are yeah, let me just do this. Maybe it's, I don't remember where it's at. Maybe it's in the back. The illustrations are cool too. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Start from the back again. So even like the little robots, those are actually about patient. They went to the back of the book. Oh, here we go. So you can see like there's like the the guy and then his giant mech. Right, you see the guy and then you see the giant mech version of him. It's cool. And then like right here is an even better example. Like you see that and you see like the robot version of it. It's really great. And then they showed the character not in a pose. Getting high. Getting high. Sharpies. I see more versions of these. And I love I love these characters' designs too. They're really great. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. And good luck with your study. And uh, please check out our website, robotpencil.net. Don't. <laughs> Don't you cry. Don't you cry. All right, guys. Thank you, guys. Peace out.